Hello, hello. We are starting at 11.02 today, so we're doing a lot better. We're shaving off those late minutes. Um, I feel we're, we're making visible progress here. We went from half an hour late to two minutes late, so thank you for bearing there for those minutes. Uh, I also got to thank Blake for being here and helping out with this, because I streamed something for members only on Friday, and... As I was presenting the problem I was going to solve, the if you watch the most recent video, it's the Lomo fitting into the Alexa mount. That's what I was working on, and I was introducing the problem, but I was streaming without sound. So at the beginning, I'm explaining, and there's nothing that you can hear about what's going on. So thanks, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> um, this thing's not showing us live yet. Uh, Do I have to reload? Look in here. Yeah? Maybe I just have to reload. I have seven viewers. Okay. Mine says five waiting, but... Uh, no, never mind. We're good. We're good. Sorry, guys. Uh, I see an ad for my own video. Cool. Um, so today we're going to be pushing further the mod that we did a couple of weeks ago on the Galius 44. This is a Gallius 44.3. It's also courtesy of Roman from Retro Photo House, and we're going to be doing a more extreme anamorphic process into it. There's a lot more tools on the table. We're going to be using different Sharpies. We're going to add flares. We're going to use some acetone and cotton pads, uh, which I highly recommend not doing without gloves, but I'm going to do it anyway because you can find gloves on time. And we are going to do some spray painting as well. So that's what's going to happen for us. I'm going to start disassembling this. Um, I also got to talk about what's going on in terms of lighting and flares. I was just watching a Zai's talk this morning about deconstructing the lens flare, which was very enlightening, pun intended. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the paint is doing everywhere. And actually, this is where we should start, I guess, before I disassemble the lens. This uh, little drawing here is the Gellius 44 design. What I marked in blue are the glass elements and everything else is mechanical. So lens flares happen when a light ray, in this case red, comes through the lens and it bounces on something, an element, bounces back on another element and it stays on its way to the sensor. So these are flares. This creates flares. This creates those blobs of light. But not only that, when light hits the mechanical parts here or here at the top, um, those also create flares. So what we're going to do today is we're going to paint some of this in orange here and here. This whole disc when we disassemble is going to be painted. And in the back here, there's also a section that we're going to paint in orange. In addition to that, some of these elements have blacked edges that we're going to remove with acetone and also paint orange. My hands are going to be awfully orange by the end of this, so I hope you enjoy me having orange hands for two weeks, because Sharpies. Um, okay, my thing is really not going. So let's start opening this lens. Um, I should cover what we're going to use. We're going to use various Sharpies. I have orange, red, some gray and black, because we're going to do a different style of paint than the last time and blue just in case people want really want blue flares although i think orange would be better we have fishing line and double-sided tape to secure the fishing line to our oval inserts we have oval inserts which are these tiny guys we have a big one and a small one that doesn't want to come off and a small one so we have these two things um, that I'm selling in my store. Uh, the link is shop.tferradans.com and you can use the same discount code as last time. You can use the discount live mods at checkout for 10% off anything. Um, 
and that's good until tomorrow midnight. So you have time to buy some oval discs and some uh, guides on how to anamorphic not only the Gallius but some other lenses. So we're gonna need oval inserts, we're gonna need a lens wrench, we're... a lens wrench? <laughs> we're gonna need some sandpaper, spray paint, cotton pads, these little guys, acetone, and just regular masking tape. For good measure, I also have lens tissues and lens uh, solution, lens cleaning solution. So that's what we're gonna be rolling with. Oh, really? You do. What are you doing? Okay. Uh, on this lens, I already installed the M42 to EF adapter. Um, Ariana is going out. My girlfriend's going out to the beach. So. <laughs> um, I already installed the M42 to EF adapter that we're gonna use for well, mounting this to something else. So I'm not gonna show that, but I'm still gonna show how to align it. And this time we also got a second camera that I can show you the ovals and the effect that we are creating before we're done. So let's get started. The easiest way to do this is to do the painting, the spray painting first. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take out the back of the lens, take out the front of the lens and get the parts that we need for spray painting. So I focus to infinity. This lens is pretty filthy. We're gonna get it a little better by the end. And just use the lens wrench to take out the rear part. Wow, really good job. Uh, Blake, if people ask relevant questions, please let me know, because my thing is not working today. <laughs> Why? Why are you not working? Uh, after a point, you can just remove it with your fingers. And this is going to be here. And we already got to the aperture mechanism. So aperture blades, this is where the oval is going to go. But unlike last time, we're going to push this further and we're going to take out some more. The front of the lens, there's a retaining ring that holds the glass in place. We're going to take that out using the lens wrench as well. And doing this live is a lot more intense than just doing it on my own pace. Although I did time it and we should be good in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, nope, not enough. So if you want to understand more of this process, you can watch the previous live mod where we just added an oval insert to this uh, lens, but we're pushing it further and this is more hardcore anamorphic. faking. So I just tilted the lens into my hand and I want to make sure I remember the orientation of this. And down here, there's a retaining, another retaining ring and another glass element that I'm going to have to tap out. Oh, I didn't. But you can see that this one, so this is the retaining ring. Which camera should I look into? Uh, here, let's go to the front camera. Okay, so this is the retaining ring and right below it, there's a glass element. And this glass element, as you can see, it's blacked out. So we're gonna put this aside. And now the lens body is completely empty of everything. You can see the aperture from both sides. So this is as easy as it goes. And I'm gonna disassemble this part as well so we can spray paint inside and like we did on the planning, we can add some more bounce of color inside the lens. So tweaking our lens wrench here. And Okay, retaining ring is out. Also gonna just tap the elements out. This one's very easy to confuse the orientation. So there's a little bubble 
on the side that faces outwards. If you look at it from the side, just keep that in mind. This is the most upwards element, and I'm going to stack them in the order that they go. Here, I'm also going to take the other side because we don't want to spray paint the glass. Oh, a sacrifice of a monitor. Thanks, Blake. <laughs> okay, this is our second retaining ring. I'm also tapping out the glass. And this one is, again, blacked out. So we're going to use acetone to take this out and paint it a more interesting color. Now, what we got to do is we got to sand these two elements. Uh, on the front retaining, on the front spacer, I'm going to sand the inside. And in the rear spacer, I'm going to send this little curve here that you can see. Um, and then we're going to mask everything so the paint doesn't get on it. So that's what we're going to be heading for it. Uh, let me just catch up with questions here. Um, the acetone is not harmful to your hand. Um, I, would, uh, I would argue against that. Um, from doing like 10 of these in a week, my fingers were pretty chemical burnt. So they also use it on their nails, which is fine. I'm using it on like the pulp of my fingers. Don't do it without gloves. It's better. It's just better. Just don't do it. Um, oh, I got the chat going. And <laughs> yeah, we're making a small uh, the budget uh, dog shit version of the Gallius 44. Is there a reason people mod so many of these Gallius lenses? Yes, they are dirt cheap and they're so easy. Like I just took it all apart and it's just as easy to put it back together. So that's a reason. It's, an, uh, it's like a, a gateway drug into lens modding, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> um, do I know? Uh, there was a bunch of plants in Russia that made the glass. For the Gallias, the, the manufacturer is also actually specified on the front, on the inscriptions of the lens. I don't know which one this is. I don't remember them all, but they all made it. And I don't think it's made anymore these days. I'm just going to send this very carefully and under control in here in this setting. And I'm going to set the glass over to the side because I don't want it to get metal shards on it. <laughs> I think it would be best not to. Ah, love this sound. And you don't have to sand much. We just have to remove the black paint that is on this and create like an area that can receive the spray paint and just let it stick. So you can see it's a little more silvery already. Um, I love how my thing gets stuck in the ad. Skip ads. <laughs> um, but we're going, we're getting there. Uh, somebody left a comment in what I believe is Russian. I'm sorry, I haven't learned Russian just yet. Uh, if you want to try Google Translate, I don't have my hands free this time. I would appreciate it. And I also see that we have 21 people here, but only three likes. So hit that like button, guys, please. And just let people know these live streams are happening. I'm trying to, I'm not trying, I, we're succeeding in making them constant. Uh, at least every Wednesday for, this is the fifth. So fun times. Uh, so if you look at this ring, it's silver now inside. My finger's also already black. And I'm gonna do the same for the inside of this little ridge. So let's go. And since I'm just working away here, uh, you can check my store, uh, shop.tferadens.com and use the code LIVEMODS for 
off until midnight tomorrow on anything. So this is the time to buy guides. This is the time to buy focus gears and everything else. Ah, black fingers. Love it. Mm, this can go a little bit more. Okay. Woo! <laughs> okay. Okay. So these are good enough for now. And I'm just going to cover everything that I don't want painted with regular masking tape. Uh, this one is really bad, real crap. And the easiest way to do so is just breaking little pieces. And carefully doing all of this. So I wanted to go over this edge, but I don't want it to go inside. And the second part, yeah. doing this stuff live is very stressful. <laughs> I can I can figure out why, but it's still like knowing it doesn't make me less stressed. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So this is the easy one. You can see it's all covered and nice. And you can see some of the tape is going on this side, but it's not touching the silver threads. So we're going to be okay. And then I'm going to do the other one, which is way more challenging because it's got more detail in it. I'm going to start with the outside. Just using a regular full sized piece. He is following up here on questions. Hey, Ed, how's it going? Marcelo, thanks for showing up, guys. Uh, getting these lenses stuck is a real challenge, and I don't wish that on my worst enemy. So having them easily disassembled is great. Having them in proper shape is also great. Um, I never know how they're going to be when you buy them from eBay. So <laughs> just buying like, what's the cheapest Gellius 44 I can get? And then you get some random piece of crap lens. It doesn't focus. Um, that's why these ones are from Roman at Retro, Retro Photo House. And Roman sells a great deal of Russian glass, which is Soviet glass, for affordable prices. So I've, I've come back to him multiple times. And this lens is actually a leftover from my joke project on how to get rid of fungus on any lens. If you watched that video, what did you think of it? <laughs> I had a lot of fun making it, and I know it would ups I knew it would upset some people because, well, most of it is building up towards a joke. But it's important to keep in mind to not believe everything you see people claim on the internet. So what I'm doing right here, you can not believe it either. It's up to you. <laughs> uh. Canon FD. That's a 50 bucks for a Canon FD. Uh, 50 mil is a pretty good deal, actually. I would take that deal. And I've had people requesting modding instructions for Canon FDs too. So these will probably start showing up here soon. Um, yeah. My chat keeps disconnecting. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, it's going, but it's... I don't know how far behind I am on people talking. I thought you were far behind. People are saying you have beautiful hands. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I take no care of it. And they're going to be way worse after this is done. <laughs> uh, so this masking process is 
by far the longest step in here. I did use longer pieces of tape because I haven't done this in a while, but shorter pieces make it easier for the second part because you can just use the sharp, ed like the straight edge from the tape onto the straight edges of the lens elements and just wrap them around and you don't have to worry too much about the curvature. Uh, but I think we are doing all right. There's one more piece here to cover. One little section. And I think this is it. Okay, so let's say these two parts are properly masked. I can set aside the tape. I'm going to do this very unhealthy thing of just kicking the dust down here on my carpet. Got to vacuum this later. <laughs> and I think we can go outside and try to spray paint this. So let's give this a go. All right, ready to go. Let's go. Switch those mics. <laughs> okay. Hopefully nothing explodes. Yep. Okay, guys. If something explodes, let us know. If something explodes, let us know. We're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> okay. All right. This is also a tour of my house, I guess. We're gonna go through some areas of it. We just moved, sort of, a month and a half ago. Uh, I need a box. Um, also, should we grab like your phone or anything so we can monitor the chat? Um, do we have a spare I'm phone? I'm just gonna do spray this and go okay. back. Okay. Yeah, it's All right. fairly quick. Okay, so we're outside. Wow. I'm probably exploding. I'm putting a box here because I don't want... Am I exploding? Should I go in the shade? Uh, I think it's okay. It's hard to tell with the brightness of the okay. phone. Here we go. Let's go in the shade. Um, setting the pieces down here. And let's just do some... Whoa, this is way more yellow than I thought. <laughs> oh no, it was just yellow in the beginning. So I see I already messed up a little bit, but I think this is it. Do you want to check them close? Um, yeah. Oh, you already did it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I put way too much paint, but hopefully it's going to be fine. So in a little bit, we're going to come and check if this is uh proper if we need another coat and we are moving forward so let's leave this i really hope this thing worked yep me <laughs> too Bro, this keeps going down. yeah the screen keeps turning off <laughs> okay we are back on to our original position and it seems the chat is working now. Oh, we just came back. <laughs> ah. okay, okay, so the next step that we're going to be working on is nice feet. Okay, hands fine. My feet kind of off limits. <laughs> uh, those two little oval discs. Um, last one I did was max aperture. I'm going to stop down a little bit on this one. So I'm going to use a smaller insert. And this is just going to go in here, drop it in, and it should stay in place and just give us very nice oval bokeh. But this thing is transparent as is, and that's not exactly what we want. I don't know if it's visible. Yeah. It is? Okay, cool. So we're going to paint it a little bit. Last time we painted it black, this time we're painting it orange to go in line with what we're doing with well, the paint outside. I don't need this sandpaper anymore. Goodbye. And the trick here is to actually use more neutral colors towards the center and stronger colors towards the edges. The reason I'm going to do that is when you're shooting, 
If you like the ovals but you don't like the tint so much, you can stop the lens down and that's going to cover most of the color area. And it's going to give you a, le a level of control, not only of exposure, but how much tint you're applying to your footage. So I'm going to start with uh, black outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now my hands are going to go all colors. Black outside. Yeah. Do you think this macro sh camera is going to work better for this? Uh, yeah, if you bring it. Here, uh, kind of in the center. Right in there. the center. Okay, I'm gonna flip this paper. I had two. I was here, ish. Uh, he's a little bit more up, actually. Up. Right there. Here. Right there is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna do this on the outside with black. Now I'm gonna add some red. Oh, this looks nice. <laughs> uh -huh. And it kind of blends together. Then I'm going to add a layer of gray because I want the oval to still be visible. Wow, this gray is very, very, very subtle. What the hell? Oh, it's just, it needs to come out. It's just too subtle. No. <laughs> okay. We're going to figure out this gray. I'm going to add a layer of orange outside. And I kind of use the Sharpie itself to blend those colors. Oh, it looks decent. Let's see if this gray is going to do something, even if it's to dilute this orange a bit around the center. Kind of did. Yeah, okay. So last time I did both sides. This time I'm only going to do one side because these Sharpies are very strong. Um, next thing I'm going to do is add the fishing line to this. So we're gonna add streak flares. Thank you, Aram. Thank you so much. Uh, 27 people watching and 15 likes. Come on, guys, you can do better than that. I need scissors that are right here. Scissors. And we're back. <laughs> okay, okay. We're being more creative with our live streaming capabilities going outside and all okay so i have my fishing line across the oval as straight as i can what flares should we do should we do orange or should we do blue that is the biggest question that we're gonna have to decide for this mod last time we did blue we can do blue again or we can do a warmer tone um you guys tell me in the chat and we'll see how that goes. So I cut two tiny strips of double-sided tape. Hey, Henry, Henry or on heat? Uh, <laughs> cheers. Blue, green, here we go. I, had, I have green markers and purple markers, but I just won't do green. I promise I won't do green. How about we move the whole live streaming outside, sunshine and fresh air? Uh, yes, I agree with you, Kazimo. It's way better outside. Today is one of the few warm days of the summer. Yesterday was great. Today is keeping on. But tomorrow we got rain again. So we'll, we'll find a subject that is entirely outside. How about that? I'm adding a double-sided tape. One side. Where? What did I do? Oh, here. <laughs> Two sides. Wow, good job, me. <laughs> and now I just gotta straighten it out. And here we go. Get more extreme. Um, I'm open to suggestions on how to get more extreme. <laughs> so let's cut this guy out. 
So I'm cutting off the spares of the fishing line. These guys can go. And I don't actually need to take out the double-sided tape. I just need to cut off the extras. So, oops. One side and the other side. Boom. Goodbye to these guys. Blue or red? Red flare? Blue flare. Get more extreme on Galleus. Um, I was looking at mirror surfaces, so maybe we can paint it with the mirror silver thing inside um, <laughs> for the next one. I haven't tried that. Uh, red, 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 red. Lots of votes for red. Uh, Trevor's asking if I ever did a Jupiter 9 like this. I have. There's a step by step for a Jupiter 9, a Tire 11A, and the Mirror 1V in the Anamorphic Kit Guide that you can find in my shop. The discount code going until tomorrow midnight is Live Mods, and you can get 15% off on anything. So here's your chance. There's also how to mod Rokinons and contact size there. Um, which is pretty fun. So if you're looking for modding more lenses, it's the way to go. Okay, so we used red for a red flare. And this is just gonna sit off to the side for a little bit and I'm gonna get hit with the acetone parts that we love so much. So here we go. Goodbye to this guy. These little splinters can go elsewhere here. And our next steps are taking out these coatings from uh, the blackening. So the blackening is here to prevent light from bouncing within the lens itself. So if it's black, there's less bouncing of light like I drew in the beginning. But if we take it out, the lens gets less contrasty. If we take it out and paint it with orange, we get more flares, more orange into our lens. So let's do that. Uh, a little cotton pad, a little acetone. Mmm, fumes, delicious. Jesus, it's been a while since I used acetone on these guys. <laughs> uh, the one downside or risk of acetone is don't overdo it because acetone also eats away the cement that connects these groups. So don't overdo it. But it's interesting how easy it gets rid of the blackening on the sides. Uh, maybe the close-up will do? Yes, staying safe, staying home. Okay. So we went from fully black to mostly transparent now. I'm just lightly scrubbing the acetone. One thing that tends to happen is the melted paint jumps onto the actual surface that we're gonna use, so we're gonna clean that later. But since I'm gonna paint it orange and probably get it wrong, I'm gonna do this cleanup at the end. I'm just gonna do the same thing for the other element. Okay. Da, na, 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 na. Yeah. There's, oh, there is a more extreme version of this, I guess. The one where you polish the glass elements with like uh, metal polish. Um, and that one you're introducing a ton of micro scratches onto the glass itself, which increases like the light scattering and it makes everything more bloomy. It's a hardcore version of a, a very hardcore version of a pro mist, one could say. Uh, but I haven't done that in a very long time because I figured it makes the look so extreme that it's hard to use it on two projects. <laughs> okay, so we've taken out 
all of that. And I'm gonna start painting it with orange. Were you a fan of extreme dog shit? Look, I had one of the original ones and I love it. I love how they work. I love the amount of customization and the reliability of the lenses. I haven't seen one in a very long time though. <laughs> how can I be more ex ex without touching the glass? I'm open to ideas like starfish bokeh or is this even in focus? Should I refocus? Uh, it's not super sharp. Yeah. Yeah, is it better? Okay. So. Um, we can cine mod these lenses as well, adding fancy lens caps, focus gears, and iris gears which is an easy process. I have models and files for all of those things and you can get uh, at least the lens caps at sim mod. And I'm just painting away my fingers and everything else. I wanna get this as covered as possible with orange. So here we go. Na, 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 na. Okay, I'm gonna say this one is good enough. And if you look up where your fingers touch, the paint kind of comes off. So it's an eternal battle. And I said my fingers are gonna get ruined, right? So do this with gloves. Don't be like me. <laughs> be better. Hopefully my bad experience will inspire you to do it properly. Everything is orange. Okay, so this one is also fairly orange. You can see the edges are messed up. Just gonna put it down and I'm gonna paint the sides of the elements that didn't have any paint on them. Cause I figured if we're doing this, let's commit all the way. Commit some lens crimes today. What I find the coolest is that if you look from the side, this is kind of glowy. I don't know if it shows up on camera properly, how the colored edge glows. Of course not, because I'm covering it with my hand. But I find that gives a very unique look to the lens itself. People lose their minds going, what are these lenses? What are they special for? Um, so this is this. Another thing that you shouldn't do like me is don't leave your acetone open because this thing evaporates like no tomorrow. So I'm gonna say these are done and I'm gonna cover the acetone back. <sighs> Can anybody in Canada actually pronounce my name correctly? Yes. Blake's one of them. Uh, I have my girlfriend also does it. And a few people have taken the time to ask and like try a bunch of times until they got it right. So that's a pretty special thing. Uh, <laughs> but it was a struggle. So I answer for the most various names. If anything is lightly resemblant of what my name should be, I look. <laughs> that's how it works. So I'm using the acetone to kind of wipe off any paint that we could have probably got on the lens and just do some cleanup. I definitely did this too soon because the lens looks way worse now. So let's get a new, <laughs> new little thingy. 
and do some wins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the lens pump is very upset at my my work making funny sounds so you can see this is very orange and I barely touched anything really <laughs> you know it's better this is gonna be better I used to put a piece of black electrical tape in the oval, did it with a big lighter for the little ones that has shape, and it worked. Yeah, there's many workarounds for getting oval bokeh. Um, I like putting them in the aperture, the actual place of the lens that the aperture sits at, because that's the optimal place in the light path. So it's gonna lead to the least loss of light and the best performance in terms of sharpness and shaping of the ovals. So that's why I like doing this convoluted way that involves disassembling the lens and everything. Okay, so this one is good enough. Not being very delicate with these guys, I, I admit. <laughs> squeaky clean, yes. This one is very squeaky clean. Okay. And my fingers just get more and more orange. And it's sticky. Okay. Okay. That was this one. Not good. Our second half, a lot of cleaning. <laughs> Not even gonna joke about looking like Trump. It's gonna push me to make blue lenses. Although blue is like the Republican party, so. <laughs> Not really a Soviet communist thing. Okay. Okay, so these are good enough, I would say. Uh, I think we can go check on the things that we spray painted outside. Um, orange fingers. And if those are good, I can start reassembling the lens. If those are not good, I'm gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do next. Um, Alex is asking about the new Siri 35 millimeter lens. Um, I have been playing with it, but I can't talk much about it. So stay tuned and the video will be out soon. Um, 38 people, 20 likes, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, this is the perfect time to do so. Uh, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna get the parts of the lens that we spray painted, cause this is a hardcore mod and hopefully start to put the lens back together so I can show you the effects of what we're doing. Um, shall we try that? Yeah. All right. Uh, Gerald and uh, lenses with purple. Yeah, I tried purple once, but didn't quite work. All right, kicked everything, shook the table, and here we go. Still looks very wet. I mean, if I'm getting my fingers painted, might as well just check. Mm. It's actually good. It's a little wet, but it's good enough for now. I'm gonna put this one here. This one is not good though. I can tell. I put way too much paint on this. So we're gonna solve that by... An inconspicuous cereal box. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna see how it does. Okay. The bottom layer is kind of dry, so I'm gonna wipe off a 
the wet paint here. It's very unhealthy. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please don't do what I'm doing. Do better. Take more time. And uh, let's bring these in. I'm gonna continue peeling this tape inside. Orange fingers, paint everything. Good times. Yay! <laughs> Like your frame is really good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the thing that we were trying to do this time is to add a moving camera to these live streams. And we're doing that with our second time ever I'm using a gimbal on a phone. And it's working pretty well. <laughs> um, I don't know if alcohol is of poor quality, but when I clean the lenses, there's a very thin layer like white smoke. Um, yeah, I've, I've had that. That's usually, in my experience, it's been grease from like fingerprints or just like if you don't wash your hands before you do the cleaning, sometimes the grease leaks through the lens tissue and you just gotta like wash your hands and redo the process or wipe it off up couple of times until the milkiness is gone. But yes, I've seen that. It's not unnatural. Okay, so this paint is dry enough. I'm just peeling it off. And the paint that we used was some crappy, the cheapest option that I could find at Home Depot, um, outdoor paint. So this is what we got. Okay. Fingers are extra sticky. Wow. <laughs> Was this a good or a bad idea? We'll find out. Uh, 15 to 20 millimeters with oval bokeh is a question. Um, if you can see any bokeh at 20 mil, I would be surprised. I've modded a Mir 20M, which is a 20 mil Soviet lens. And honestly, you could never see the bokeh. But if you want to learn how to do that, you can get the anamorphic guide at my website for a discount and uh, you can do it yourself and check out if you like the results. Um, if you're buying anything from the shop, just use the disc, the code live mods, everything together. It doesn't matter if it's caps or not caps. And that'll give you 15% off at checkout. Oh, that angle. I'm just peeling away everything. Yeah, gloves. I mean, it's past time for gloves, but... And this is the best time to have gloves, but... I also ran out. Oof. Disgusting. I didn't do a great job down here, as you can see. And I'm gonna try to wipe it off... before it's fully set. Yeah, it kinda worked. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, I'm going to sacrifice a little more lens wipes for trying to clean my hands. <sighs> Wonderful isopropyl alcohol. And this one is just going to wrap all of this crap here because I don't want this paint around anymore. Please come off. Thank you very much. And from here, we're going to keep on reassembling this lens. So the first thing I'm going to do is reassemble the back part, back the rear group, and then we're going to do the front. Use the acetone. That would be clever. Yum. Let's try that. Chemicals. <laughs> don't think this is a good idea. To be fair and honest, I really don't think it is, but we're doing it because my hands are ruining everything. Is it working? Is it? Is it? My, my nails are clean, that's for sure. But my fingers, not so much. The, the spray paint is gone though. So I, um, it was worth the sacrifice. Okay, 
now I'm going to build this back up and it goes this way, this guy. I'm going to find the bubble. So the bubble is this way. If you look at it this way, it goes on the top here. Oof. Not doing a great job. Where's our lens wrench? I'm gonna use only one side of the lens wrench to put the lens as it should be. Get our locking ring here. And I'm just gonna start screwing it by hand. Definitely not an eco-friendly mod. Um, that would be a thing actually. To it's an interesting thing to think about. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten this up all the way with the lens wrench. And the second element on the back goes in from here. And this guy goes back through here. And so again, I'm gonna just use my fingers to kind of secure it and spin it in place. I don't know if the stickiness is from my fingers or from the body, but I love it. <laughs> okay, screw it in. Make it tight. Also going to tighten this guy. It's pretty good. You can see there's dust in there already because we... I... I didn't do an excellent job of cleaning it. I'm just gonna say it adds character. Whoa. Um, you can do a better job if you're doing this. I see the time is ticking and I wanna get this finished. <laughs> so now I'm gonna put the, the front elements back. I'm just gonna drop this in here. Let's try to do a better wiping. Mm -hmm. This definitely needs some more wiping. Let's do a new one. <laughs> How's it going, Matt? Good to see you here. Okay, so top of it. It's a good wipe. In the bottom. And it's funny because it always comes out orange. No matter what you do. I don't know if it's from my fingers, or if it's from the top of the lens. We're never gonna... Uh. <laughs> Dropped it. Let's restart. Is this decent? Pretty okay. And then, why does that one always have a flare at first? That camera. The main camera? Yeah. I think it's some kind of network thing. Ah, interesting. Okay, so I'm using the lens wrench to make sure this is aligned. And it just pops into place. Boop. Perfect. Um, so there we go. And then I can add back this ring. I'm going to show it to... Close up camera, I guess. Yeah, a little lower. A little lower there. Yeah, and close to the camera. Weep. There. Here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna drop this in again. Look. And use the lens wrench to secure it into place. Eh. Good stuff. Good job, me. Okay. So it goes in there. And it's not the most orange thing I've ever done, but it'll be good enough for now. I'm gonna drop in last glass. Again, mm, that could use some cleaning. Let's get it out. Come on. And clean it a little bit better. <laughs> Sound effects included. Okay, this is a lot better than it was. So here we go. 
goes in there. And we're putting this lock ring back into place. I guess we needed a light for this close-up camera, hey? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Next time. Is there any risk of damage when you drop the lens in like that? Like uh, not at this distance. And also because these elements are pretty small. If I was doing this safely and I had gloves, I would hold the element upside down and just lower the body onto it and then flip everything over. But since I don't have gloves, that would just lead to more fingerprints. And I, I'm choosing the drop mode over. <laughs> Plus you can always use the lens wrench to kind of align things into their supposed expected position. So this is our lens. It's orangey and you can see some of it. The bottom is not there yet. Uh, we're going to add the aperture ring here. This is our aperture. Add the aperture ring, the oval, and the rear group. So let's do that. Aperture ring coming in. Just drop it in there. Since we got that fancy adapter that allows us to realign everything, we don't have to worry too much about the alignment. And I'm still thinking there's going to be a lot of red coming through. But put the oval in there, putting the rear group back in place. Yes, this is 16 by 9 this time. Uh, we have way too many cameras, so I can't anamorphic all of them, and I don't see an advantage of just cropping in just for the sake of cropping in on a live stream. I think you guys want to actually see what I'm doing, so we decided to go for 16 by 9. Okay, so the rear group is back in place. It's very dirty. And if you look through the lens, this is what you get. Um, and you can see how that closes and opens. You see what I mean when closing down the aperture does not cut off the oval, but it limits how much red comes through? I can close all the way down to here and not cut up the oval. Um, so... Basically, the lens is almost done. What we need to do now is to align the flare with this pin, which is like the mount pin on the EF mount. So I'm going to resort to the capability of rotating this mount. It's a special mount. You can find it on eBay. I'm going to add it to like the description of this video. Um, it has three tiny screws that allow you to rotate the thing freely. And whoops. So these should be perpendicular, and this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, a little over this way. And now I'm just going to lock it back. Oops. Yep. Yeah, lock it back into position. And then we're going to mount this lens on the camera that's actually shooting this close up, and we're going to see what happens. Okay. I'm um, not giving away this one lens. I'm sending it to actually Mark Holt and he's going to play with it. And I want to get his insight on animal faking. So I'm sending this one to him. And we're going to get more lens mod giveaway soon. I have a couple lenses to mod and I can give to you guys. But not this one, not this time. Okay, I'm going to swap the lens. Yeah? All right. Popping this off. We're using a very fancy 60 mil macro for the purpose of this. Here's an exposed sensor. And lock into place. Just cover the 60. And everything is red to begin with, am I wide open? Yes. Ah, nice, this shows perfectly. Okay, lower the ISO by a bunch. We're on you. Okay. Um, I'm shaky, wow. Uh, let's see if I can stabilize this, it's pretty correct. So let's focus down here. This is my keyboard, and you can see how much red 
tint is there, right? Like if I point at a light source, it's crazy. Although I can focus this phone. So when I stop it down, you see the red goes away. And I find that to be super neat. But if you look in the background, uh, where is the background? If you look in the background, the ovals are still there. I started to get them cut now. But here, they're pretty ovals. And you can see the lines of the bokeh as well. Oops, wrong direction. There we go. So this is a, an endless loop. <laughs> and this is how this mod works. Um, so if you focus close here, you can control the tint and the oval should be good for a fair amount of the footage. Let's put something here that's more focusable in. Yeah, you can see the ovals back there. Wow, I'm really shaking this camera. The ovals back there. And I did a pretty good job of aligning it. Like, see how the ovals don't change size? I'm gonna try to punch in. Oof. The ovals don't really change size, it's just the tint that changes. And what was the last thing I was gonna say about this? Um, Ovals, da da da. Is this it? Oh yeah, flares. <laughs> eh. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so if I put that flashlight there, I can't see. Can't see if this is flaring or not. Tiny bit, not really. And it's mostly because I'm blind. Yeah, it's flaring. There we have some flares and you can also like, you can see the tint at work here. I can't see if it's in focus because I'm blind. <laughs> so these are our flares, they're decently aligned and the tint is mostly gone because I stopped it down. But yeah, there, the oval's in the background, boom, there you go. So this is the result of what we were trying to accomplish. Um, not much flare, indeed, but oh, I almost turned it off. I don't need to turn this off. Not much flare, but just a clean streak. Um, sometimes I get the streak gets splintery. I don't really know why. It's mostly to do with the straightness of the fishing line in there. And I'm glad that I was able to demonstrate what the lens actually does. This was great. Um, so this is it for today. We finished just five minutes after what I was expecting to finish at. And um, I guess I'm just going to put on the 60 mil and show some close-ups of this. But if you guys got any... <laughs> wow. So sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. What is happening? It's my phone. Somebody's calling me oh. during this. I'm sorry. I'm not going to pick up. Uh, I dropped the lens. It seems to be working fine still. So this is the lens. Uh, focus works fine. Although I dropped it. And iris works fine. I feel um, a warmer white balance on camera would have given us an even better result. It was going more towards magenta more than orange. So maybe I should have used less red and more orange. Uh, that's something that you can experiment with. I've tried this, which is my favorite. I've tried blue, which I'm not really fan of it just makes everything purple i tried green definitely a no-go green flares are terrible and um <laughs> i think that's it i tried some like yellow and purple purple is the same as blue yellow is almost invisible 
Um, there's a question of, is there a way to get flare without a line in the bokeh? Yes, you can get the Siri lens, which is actually anamorphic, or you can do it all in post. Uh, those are the only options. I'm going to probably do a video explaining why the flare happens in the first place, because that's a very interesting explanation. Um, but this is it. We're done. If you got any questions about this process, uh, shoot them now. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining and uh, <laughs> putting up with my ridiculously loud laugh when I drop the lens. And this is what happens. I'm so stressed I dropped the lens. And we were watching the camera through it. So, fun times. Um, if you got any questions, just leave comments in the video later. Uh, if you want to get oval inserts or the guide, go to shop.tferdans.com and use the code LIVEMODS. It's good until tomorrow midnight. Um, and that's going to give you 15% off at checkout for anything. So, always good. And that's it. Thank you for joining. Hope you had fun. I did. <laughs> Bye, guys. Uh, I think they can still hear us on the screen. Well, maybe they can. Did you enable the mic or no? Uh, yeah, I think it's still enabled. So. Okay, hey guys, you probably can still hear us. We're here just waiting for this end screen because we figured... Oh, it's over. Stream's over, guys. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> ah.